please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. On the next episode of CNBC TV 18 Weekender, we travel to Kochi to throw the spotlight on two brothers who have helped successfully take their family business public. Arun and Mithun Chitalapalli of Bondala and WeGuard teach me their business mantras and tell me why their brands are all set for a facelift. Don't miss it this weekend at these times only on CNBC TV 18. This is TV 80 and you're watching CNBC TV 80. Young Turks brought to you by the all new S Cross. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. After uh, Infosys, we want to take the learnings and apply those learnings to as many companies as possible. For that, you need a platform. And Axlor, first of all, is an institutional platform supporting early stage companies. Supporting early stage companies. So, uh, in the last uh, two and a half years of Axelor, one thing that I keep reminding myself is that uh, Axelor is also a startup. Right? So, just like any other startup, uh, you know, the first few years, uh, it is just a series of experiments where we are validating our hypothesis around the different things uh, that we set out to solve. The one thing that I can clearly say is that whatever conviction that we started out with, whatever hypothesis that we started out with when we started Axelor, I think uh, the conviction has only become stronger. And the conviction that the founders of Axelor, Chris Gopalakrishnan and Ganapati Venu Gopal are referring to is if one follows a process and a systematic approach to venture investing, one can bring some method to the madness of scaling up. On the show today, we're going to give you a sense of the depth of the accelerator ecosystem in the country, the gap that the accelerator and early stage venture fund Axelor is trying to plug. We also meet three startups from the Axelor portfolio across different sectors and different stages of growth. Pocket Ace is a digital entertainment company that runs successful online brands like Filter Copy and Gobble. IIT Madras-based startup Detect, whose drone data solution is currently being used by some of India's largest oil and gas companies. And Surveda, whose AI engine makes customer experience management for online and offline businesses easier. India has become uh, the third largest ecosystem for startups um, in the world, uh, fifth in innovation. This uh, wave of uh, startups, uh, they feel that they can conquer the world and that's quite exciting to work with them, to support them, uh, to make it happen. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have thousands of startups coming up. And at the top of the pyramid, you had uh, the venture industry that, is, uh, that had ready capital to deploy into innovative startups. But there was also a huge uh, missing middle. Right. So if you compare with any other mature ecosystem, the middle has some two or three important components. Number one, there is enough institutional capacity that is required to support startups. And institutional capacity comes in the form of good accelerator programs. It comes in the form of enough number of mentors and advisors available for startups. The second part is uh, the angel and the seed investment capacity. And in India, the, despite the number of new startups coming up, right, in thousands, the, my own estimate is that uh, the angel capacity is about one hundredth of what the uh, system needs, right? So let's illustrate some of what Ouija is alluding to with numbers and data from a NASCOM and Xenob report that was published earlier this year. And let's start with a comparison of how India stacks up against China, the US, Israel and UK. Now China counts for about 2,400 incubators and accelerators. The US has 1,500. India is at about 140, Israel at 130 and the UK is at about 50 or so. Just for perspective, Israel and UK are much, much smaller geographies, so by comparison, the density of accelerators is quite commendable. A fairer comparison is between the US and China, where we lag by many, many miles. Also in the US, 75% of the startups that are able to go ahead and secure Series A come out of four accelerator programs, so the pyramid is well built out. 
So let us take US for instance, right? Uh, they've got almost six angel investors for every startup. You have really large global tech companies coming out of there year on year, right? So that creates a huge pool of talent. Uh, on an average, there will be at least uh, 10 to 12 mentors that are available for every startup because there are enough number of people with experience. So while in numbers, the number of startups coming up in India is almost the same as that of the US, right? None of this other capacity exists. So what it means for anybody deciding to play in this space is that you can't really uh, be a siloed model and hope for uh, success because all the other things that you need uh, to make this success possible as a system is not available. Which is why if you see the last three, four years, right, uh, pure play accelerators have not been able to scale. They've actually scaled down. If the model has to succeed in India, two things will have to happen. The model has to be a lot more integrated. So you have to decide to uh, help startups, not just uh, over a hundred days, not just over uh, six months, not just over nine months, that you need to have a model that allows you to help them on an ongoing basis in the first nine to 12 months of their journey. And the second thing is, uh, if you decide to play in this space, you cannot just build your own model. You have to invest a lot more time in building the network, whether it is customer access, whether it is investors. Axelo Ventures is an accelerator and seed fund set up in November 2014 with a vision to address these problems through a new venture funding model. It runs three programs, a 100-day accelerator program for startups in early stages of IDEA, a pre-seed funding program with investments up to $40,000 to $75,000 for startups with early traction and a seed funding program with investments up to $500,000 for startups looking to scale. It currently works with startups in consumer internet, enterprise, healthcare, deep tech and fintech. Founded by 25-year-old Madhulika Mukherjee and 23-year-old Tushar Mishra, Surveyor is a startup that graduated from the summer 2017 batch of the Accelerator program. Surveyor is a customer experience management solution for businesses to understand and act on customer opinions accurately and in real time. By having all customer opinions and feedback at one single place on Surveyor, businesses are able to identify gaps in their service quality, measure important business metrics and improve upon them. But how is it different from a plethora of similar products available in the market, not just in India, but globally too? If I, as a customer, walk into a, a McDonald's showroom and I go and write a review on Zomato, and whatever review that might be, that won't be pulled out by a help desk solution or a CRM solution. Now, similarly, there are multiple different customers talking on other different channels. So, we aggregate all of these opinions from multiple different channels and then tell the business what are customers talking about you. So is it positive, is it negative, what are the aspects that you should improve, what is it that uh, you're already doing better, this is something that you should do more across different locations, what are your weak points, what are your strong points, so that you can take preemptive measures to improve customer experience. The product went into beta in September 2016, targeting clients in the hospitality industry. The venture scored its first paid client in November and in the last eight months has grown to over 300 customers in India, Middle East and UK and is clocking a turnover of $6,000 a month. With growth on track, we asked the team why they joined Axelor. It was very funny for businesses to take us seriously. Okay, you guys are just out of college and you will tell me how to do this. So initially when we got to Axelor, we were not that confident. Just for example, we could not pick up the phone and call a CEO of uh, uh, this um, uh, publicly listed company and say, hey, I have this product, uh, will you be interested? So uh, here talking to people from different domains, uh, understanding the, more, uh, the problem more deeply um, helped us get that confidence. And uh, today with that confidence, just after graduating from the program, now we have uh, 10 to 12 huge logos as our customers, wherein we have been able to sell to uh, businesses, 20, 25 year old businesses. Every product company right now, uh, based in India, often faces the fear of turning into a services company because um, after getting a few big Indian clients, uh, do you think that they dilute the product in a way uh, to uh, Indianize their product so much that they start servicing essentially those Indian clients? Uh, so there is no um, escaping of some customization when you're working with enterprise clients. 
Second thing is, you should not subsidize one with the other. So you can't subsidize the license revenue and give services free. You shouldn't give services free and subsidize the license revenue. Make sure that both are profitable by themselves over time. So are you a fan of the whole ecosystem of uh, startup mentorship where people charge you for mentoring? Or are you more of a do-it-yourself versus trial and error kind of an entrepreneur? First of all, a good mentor will provide significant value and a good mentor will not charge for the mentoring. Uh, so I uh, say that uh, mentoring is something you do out of your passion, your love, and your need to give something back. Uh, when I look at my own career, uh, I have had mentors at different stages of life and different people actually. Uh, so for example, during the initial stages of Infosys, uh, Naran Murthy acted as a mentor because he was older, he had a lot more experience than us, and then he would act as a mentor. If you look at NASCOM for example, yeah. NASCOM was created for sharing and helping each other very openly, even though we are fierce competitors and helped each other. So learning happened because by sharing. Learning by sharing experiences is one of the key ingredients to building a successful startup ecosystem. Moving on, another startup that Chris has been excited to invest and play mentor to coincidentally comes from his alma mater, IIT Madras. Now, plant maintenance is one of the biggest impediments to productivity across industrial projects because it requires human intervention, which is both expensive and unsafe. So 23-year-old Daniel Raj wanted to change the game by letting drones take over. Here's the story of Detect Technologies. <laughs> For these three engineers from IIT Madras, what started out as a hobby has now become an entry into a $10 billion market. They set up Detect Technologies through which they offer drones to help industries improve efficiencies. These industries can range anywhere between chemical, fertilizer, nuclear and most importantly, oil and gas sectors. Today in the industry you have several pipeline leakages, people have died uh, because of it and a lot of productivity loss is also there in these industries. Per day they lose several crores once they have a shutdown due to a leak. The reason this happens is because there's no technology today that can monitor thickness changes in these pipelines beyond a certain temperature. So what we have come out with is some patented technology for the first sensor in the world that can monitor these pipeline thickness changes till 350 degrees Celsius. So we took that, took it several steps forward, made it extremely low cost, made it the first IoT system out there to do this. And it's taken us about five years of R&D to build this together. The next challenge was to provide a solution to large-scale plants that still follow primitive methods of inspection, by which we mean shutting down the plants for visual inspection. So Detect developed a completely automated industrial drone that can be used to inspect and assess large volume assets like crude furnaces, cables, boilers and stacks. But Detect's solution goes beyond just recording a video and handing it out to the client. We built a lot of domain expertise into the algorithms we built to automatically interpret these assets and figure out what the corroded areas are and what the client has to do to account for it. The drone building is one aspect, the sensor integration is another aspect and the third aspect is the consultancy part of it. So a lot of companies would have to coordinate to get this wholesome solution out there. We are trying to do it all together. And all this is done within the same day making Detect not just a complete but also a quick solution. Established just last year with an initial funding of 10 lakh rupees from IIT Madras Incubation Cell, Detect has already signed up clients like Reliance Industries, Bharat Petroleum and HPCL. With a target to generate revenues of over 3 crore rupees by the end of FY18, Detect wants to fly its solutions overseas to countries like Singapore, Malaysia and the UAE. Interestingly, Detect Technologies has been incubated at IIT Madras's incubation center. And I would like to point out here that of the 140 incubators and accelerators we have in India presently, a hundred of them are incubators, which means they help with the idea and product development and seed funding, while about 40 of them are accelerators, which like we've seen with Axelor, provide mentorship to companies with at least a ready version of the product, helping them scale up. Now, most of these incubators are actually set up 
on campuses and as many as 30 of these have been set up only in 2016 as part of a government mandated program. As far as accelerators are concerned, most of them are independent entities like Axelor, while the rest of the pie is made up of corporate accelerators, a segment that's seen a 35% growth year on year. There needs to be more um, such uh, institutional angel networks, uh, angels who will come and uh, support the startups. There needs to be more formal programs. There needs to be networking of accelerators and incubators so that we can learn from each other, support each other. But I'm very optimistic that has actually grown. You know, the country today has 280 plus um, accelerators and incubators. I think on the late stage, we need to look at um, family offices, we need to look at our institutional investors, earmarking a part of their um, funds to support the startup ecosystem. On that note, it's time for a break, but on the other side, we continue our conversation with Chris and VG, and we also bring you the story of Pocket Aces when we return, so stay tuned. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. Welcome back to Young Turks, India's longest running show on entrepreneurship. On the show today, we've been talking about Axelor, founded by Infosys co-founders S.D. Shibulal and Chris Gopalakrishnan. This accelerator has emerged as one of the largest platforms in India to support early stage startups since its inception in 2014. It supported over 70 startups through its accelerator program, invested in over 25 startups and has an active community of over 180 startup founders. Axelor has also built a large market network comprising of mentors, investors, enterprises, academic institutions and service partners. We asked Chris what startups must keep in mind when pitching to him. First of all, uh, you know, don't talk about uh, how much money that you're going to make. It is about finding a customer, serving that customer. It's about customers and creating a service or a product that the customer will buy from you. Second, uh, talk about your team uh, more than about yourself. Um, I think it's important for you to be excited about your team members. Third is, um, um, you know, the idea morphs over time. Uh, so don't be so passionate about the idea that you're not willing to listen to criticism. Many a time I've found that um, when we point out that something doesn't seem right or they still continue to argue. Feedback only makes you better. And what does Axelor promise to provide in return to the startup that come into its fold? The startup should be able to see at least 3 to 5x growth. They should be able to raise whatever capital they need for them in the next uh, 12 to 15 months. And they should be able to exit the program with a certain business momentum. If you are an enterprise customer, you exit with a portfolio of uh, uh, customer. And uh, if you are in a consumer uh, uh, startup, you exit the program with a, a traction and validation of uh, what it actually requires for the business to scale, right? One of the startups that's ticked all the right boxes for Chris and has outperformed the Axelor metrics of returns is Mumbai-based Pocket Aces. Launched in 2013 as a film production company, the founders Ashwin Suresh, Anirudh Pandita and Aditi Srivastava sense the increasing need for content to target the Indian millennial. So in 2015, Pocket Aces pivoted to becoming a digital entertainment company. It creates content across three channels, Dice Media, Filter Copy and Gobble. It reaches out to over 40 million people weekly. Here's a look at the Pocket Aces story. Founded by three electrical engineers turned investment bankers who decided to give up their high paying jobs to fill the entertainment gap in India. Pocket Aces is a digital entertainment company that conceptualizes, creates and distributes original content targeted at millennials through its three channels. Dice Media, which produces web series, filter copy that focuses on sketches, short formats and shareable content written and video, and Gobble, a content destination of foodies. Pocket Aces has published over 4,000 articles it has created over 500 short form videos and has launched four web series across their three channels. So we asked Ashwin what sets Pocket Aces apart from other content players. 
the fact that we are very data driven and so when we put content out there is a lot of testing that's happened behind the scenes we use a lot of data to influence our content ideas and our content thesis uh, so the probability of our content being good is much higher than most other people and you'll see this with the shows we've done and then of course the you know the fact that we we are where the audiences are unlike a lot of companies in india and a lot of platforms in india we don't need you to download an app or download you know and register somewhere to consume our content if you're on facebook we're on facebook if you're on instagram we're going to show up on your instagram feed if you're on whatsapp or twitter or youtube we're going to be available wherever the audience is watching reaching out to an audience of 40 million weekly and with 125 million organic video views and original content Pocket Aces has created engaging digital content for brands such as velvetcase.com, Lifestyle, Flipkart, Epigamia, Red Chili's Entertainment, Sephora, Manforce and many more. While the biggest revenue stream for Pocket Aces is entered around native advertising by brands, Aditi tells us that there are other monetization models the venture has created with its content. We own the intellectual property of all of the content and so we are actually taking that and leveraging it through other platforms. So to give you an example, we're uh, on different airlines now. So for example, we're on Jet Airways, uh, we're having conversations with Etihad and SpiceJet. We are working with TV networks who want to take and put our content um, you know, on TV. We're also the first Indian digital company to send its content to China. So China has a YouTube equivalent called Yokutoru and it's huge with over 500 million monthly MAUs and we are basically one of the channels uh, Filter Copy and Gobble are both on Yokutoru. The first Indian digital media company to have a presence in China, Pocket Aces raised half a million dollars of seed funding from a Singapore-based family office to start up. It then raised its Series A of $3 million from Axelor Ventures, Sequoia Capital, North Face Media, Aaron Capital and 314 Capital amongst others in 2016. The money has been used for expanding the team and building proprietary technology. The venture is also looking to close its Series B round by mid next year. So what else is in store for the future? In terms of our business plans, next year we'll probably do four to six new shows long-form shows. We've done two of the biggest hits in India in the last two years, Little Things and What the Folks. So we'll do season twos of those and new shows that will come out. And uh, so there's going to be a bunch of shows. In terms of content frequency, we're going to go... Already we've gone from doing one video every two weeks, one video every three weeks, to doing three videos in a week on Filter Copy, and that's going to increase. Uh, we're going to try new content formats, uh, which we've thought of which will come out in the next year. And then in terms of uh, Gobble, which is uh, our food channel, uh, we're trying to do, get to about two to three videos a day and maybe do even long form content there. It surely seems to be an exciting time for the team as their show Little Things was one of the most successful web series from India in 2016 with a reach of over 35 million across its episodes and over 350 million impressions on YouTube. Their 2017 show, What the Folks, was also a smash hit with over 20 million views across platforms with over a billion impressions on YouTube and Facebook. While Pocket Aces' strategy is to be innovative across platforms and to double down on stuff that's working, but the larger goal is to provide great Indian content that resonates globally. Well, here's wishing the team at Pocket Aces the very best of luck for your future endeavours. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Young Turks. Till next week, from all of us here, goodbye. Thanks for watching. We always like to hear from you, so send us your feedback on Twitter, Facebook or on email. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.